Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, Bevy upgraded to WGPU 0.26, and with another week, we saw another particle editor, this time for Bevy and Oki. Bevy mixed space also got split out into a separate repo, which joins it with other similar crates like Atomic Cow and Disqualified, in being solid infrastructure crates with few or no dependencies in the Bevy engine organization. We also get to see a full re-implementation of Quake 1 in Bevy. And that kicks us off with Solari, Bevy's real-time ray-traced lighting effort, which added roughness, metallic, and reflectance properties to its material system in 2242, as well as a new balance heuristic for spatial resampling in 2259. As always with Solari, this is fairly experimental work, so don't expect to drop it into your games just yet, but it still is exciting to see progress. And next up, we've got refactors in the rendering stack, which continue with the introduction of a Bevy shader crate. The Bevy shader crate takes a smaller amount of dependencies on crates like Weasel and Naga, which can enable the creation of shader libraries that don't depend on Bevy render. And 2328 introduces a new serialized image struct, which similar to the recent serialized mesh is a temporarily serializable version of an image. That is, you probably shouldn't store this anywhere, but it is meant to be used over tools like the Bevy remote protocol. This is currently being used in a navigation mesh prototype. For anyone using BRP, as of 19.377, most Bevy remote protocol methods have been renamed for 0.17, which will be a breaking change for your clients. And some ergonomic changes in 2.0312 introduces a from implementation for Val and UI rect, which can reduce verbosity as you can see here when used in node definitions. This is particularly useful for UI related code. And as part of the headless widgets effort, 2237 introduces a new color swatch widget. There are some notes here about this being pre-BSN work and it needing to be slightly reworked after BSN lens, but we'll see when that actually happens. And that puts us into the showcases with Proof of Duel. Proof of Duel is a first small multiplayer game built with Bevy Quinette and Aceprite. Gameplay proceeds with the first player creating a match and the second player joining the match by ID. All players press the key combinations and the faster player wins. And there were a couple updates this week to this project, including some updates to the physics code, as well as this demo, which shows the shapes kind of enabling a physical interaction and kind of shooting at each other. 3D card animation seems to be pretty popular lately. This is a 3D card animation experiment. Each one is an entity and has its own eagerly context rendered to a texture. And continuing the trend of about, uh, you know, one particle editor a week, this is the Bevy Enoki particle editor. This is some updates to it. And Bevy Enoki is a CPU calculated particle system. The last two editors we've seen were GPU particle systems for Bevy Hanabi. And if you love Quake, you'll love this next demo, which is a Bevy based total rewrite of Quake 1, which has reached a playable state and there's even support for mods. There's a bunch more videos in the Discord thread, so if you're not in the Bevy Discord, go join it and click the Discord link to see those. And Yarn Spinner's been around a while, and this is the start of a dialogue system for to build a home. So it's quite nice to see Yarn Spinner being used for that dialogue, which you can see the yarn file on the left. Next up, we've got noise-based cave generation, which has also been released as a standalone noise crate called FMC underscore noise. The noise crate is enabled by SIMD as well. There have been a number of noise crates lately. This is just one of them. The other that I can think of off the top of my head is NOIZ. And sometimes for our showcases, all we get are screenshots, and this is a pretty cool screenshot. This is terrain generation and rendering system. Instead of rendering to a giant texture once and then loading into the game, it now generates the data at runtime, yielding much better detail while taking less time to load. Each planet and moon in the game now has a function that maps a position onto the surface to an elevation and a color. And then we've got a demo using Bevy GGRS alongside IRO, I-R-O-H, which is a P2P library. There's an additional gist here that contains the pertinent implementation details, so go check out that link on the website or go check out the rest of the video in the Discord thread. And that brings us into the crate releases with Bevy Streaming. Bevy Streaming is a crate aimed at cloud gaming using WebRTC. And then we've got Bevy ECS Tiled 0.8. Bevy ECS Tiled is a plugin for working with 2D tile maps creating using the Tiled Map Editor. It leverages the official tiled rust bindings for parsing and loading tiled map files and uses the Bevy ECS tile map crate for efficient rendering. 0.8 brings an integration with the Geo crate for unifying physics colliders. Bevy Save is a crate that we've seen before. It is a framework for saving and loading application state. With the recent introduction of reflection powered versioning and migrations, Bevy Save has released 1.0. And Junmo provides an ergonomic, functional, and declarative API for specifying Bevy system dependency graphs, where output handles, quote, to nodes of the graph are canonically referred to as signals. I would refer to this as a functional reactive programming library, or more commonly known as a signal library. 
And Bevy Northstar is a hierarchical pathfinding plugin for Bevy. It released 0.3.2, which brings improved 3D support to better handle 2.5D, which includes isometric maps and 2D tile maps with height. And with that, we're into the educational section. This is actually one of my own videos, a dive into Bevy GLTF. This is a deep dive into the Bevy GLTF crate that you might've seen on this channel, its features and the implementations related to it. Next up, we've got Bevy iOS Game Center, which is a write up around what the author learned integrating iOS Game Center with Bevy. This is a great practical real life post. So if you're looking to get integrated with Game Center on iOS, it's going to be a good resource for you. And finally, we've got a YouTube video about recreating Undertale's battle system. This is recreating the Undertale battle system from scratch in Bevy. And of course, as always, we have the rest of the PRs that were merged, as well as the PRs that are open if you want to get involved and do some review. And otherwise, I'll see you next week for another week in Bevy.